again. Anyway, welcome everybody. Hello, it's Tuesday and that means it's Ghost Trick o'clock. And, oh, that's the, that's the yes button. Okay, oh, 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 oh. Wait. Why? Okay, there's an auto save and a manual save. The manual save is later than the auto save, so I assume I want it. Yeah. Yeah, because this is at a different time, so something else was going on. Okay. Ah, here we go. Okay. We can actually chat a little bit here, amazingly. Yeah. Oh, it won't let us go over to the other side of the screen. It's actually a separate room actually separate okay all right well hello everybody and welcome back welcome back to ghost trick where we are ghosts we do tricks the ghost's name ostensibly is Sissel and I'm only able to remember that because it rhymes with missile I don't know if that's what they're going for or if that's just coincidental, but given how bad I am at remembering names, that's a smart decision. The words don't look like they would rhyme and perhaps in some dialects of English, they don't rhyme, but in mine they do, so. We are currently tasked with protecting the girl and investigating this mystery, but Sissel, or ostensibly Sissel, um, mostly wants to investigate his own murder, which, I mean, fair. Especially if he is a detective, which he does seem to be, and the title of the game would imply. I think a detective wanting to solve the mystery of their own murder is, is very understandable. Um, Yes, so we, we met a very good dog. We met a girl, well, we met a young woman whose character design feels like a cross between Ace Attorney and WarioWare. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like I'd seen her before. There's one particular character in WarioWare um, who, who, I think it's the girl who rides the scooter? who she looks like, kind of, but like Ace Attorney styled. Um, we also met some bad guys who aren't actually aliens necessarily, but my brain is really convinced they're aliens because they're blue and they use technology weirdly. Yes, Mona, that's it, thank you. I'm so glad somebody knew what I was trying to say there. Thank you, High Volts. Um, We've, we've teleported through telephones. We've seen a not very sympathetic lady who writes romance novels and has hair shaped like a rose. Um, she's got a really interesting character design. Um, and the whole game is a Rube Goldberg invention. And I'm wondering how that's going to affect the story because like, the characters are really funny and charming. The style, like, it's just, it's a very stylish, stylized game. Um, the music is fantastic. The puzzles have been really fun and not overly complicated yet. Yet. We'll see. Um, but at this moment i'm expecting that it's just going to be a silly quirky entertaining story but the way my friends have been talking about it and the way i've heard people talk about it i'm like wait is this gonna get emotional we'll find out um because a bunch of my friends messaged me and were like oh my god i saw that you're playing this game i love this game oh it's so good i got to a point where i couldn't put it down and i'm like really i mean don't get me wrong it's really fun but i wonder if that's going to have that effect on me um, so we're about to go teleport again 
and I think the dude told me where I was supposed to go next, so hopefully he'll remind me. I'm wondering what the significance of this poster and the wall is, because it looks like it's gonna have some significance, you know? Like, that's an interesting design that looks like it's like, it looks like it's got like, signals going up and signals going down. I don't know, we'll see. Yes, I am gonna play it and see. That's the only way to know. Um, I don't know if there's anything I forgot to, um, that I forgot to go to mention in, in a recap. I don't know, this is not a very effective recap, but I'm excited. Okay, so we started in the junkyard where we met not Mona. This is where the blue dude lives. This was um, not Mona's apartment with her not actual little sister, but like a little sister figure. And then here we have the romance novelist. And this, I believe, must be where we're supposed to go next. And this is the romance novelist's husband, who might be the prime minister based on the uh, novel that she's writing. <coughs> And the fact that he looks very important, according to his office. Are you ready to dive in, folks? Is there anything else that you would like to say or point out or uh, anything? Or shall we go ahead and dive back in and see how it goes? All right. Hi, Andro. Good to see you. Yeah, well, or, or Nick, it could be semi-autobiographical, and that's why he doesn't want her to write it, because it's going to betray their love, and I don't know, paint him in a bad light. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's travel to the troubled man's office. Let's pretend I can hit the right button. Traveling through the interwebs. Oh, I have to do voices, and I don't remember any of my voices from last time except missiles, so. Oh, I hope you can have your 1 a.m. chocolate cake. My birthday party is this weekend, and one of my friends has offered to bake me a cake. Even though I love to bake, she and I became friends because we both love to bake, so she's going to bake me a cake. So. I need to uh, I need to respond to her actually she messaged me today asking what kind of cake so yes I will be inventing new voices every every uh, I guess every stream will have different voices <laughs> unless I get my memory back which does not seem to be at any risk of happening <sighs> all right <clears throat> are you all right sir this is very British looking like the what are they called? The guards out front of Buckingham Palace, do they have a name? With the funny little hats that go to here instead of like under your chin, why do they do that? Why don't they go properly under the chin? Like why, why are the hats like this? Why is that a thing? It seems like bad design decision to me. I ordered all of you not to come near me. Did you see the man flow? He like just like flailed his limbs out to the side. Amazing. Okay. All right. I I beg your pardon, sir. <sighs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. But I'd like to be left alone right now. You may go. He looks very troubled. They've done a really good job making his his character model and his character art match. Like, that is a really weird hairstyle he's got. But it's exactly the same in both, despite the style being slightly different. Like, it's really quite impressive. They, they did really well. And especially because I'm used to um, Amano and Final Fantasy, <laughs> there's a big departure. It's impressive. Yes, sir. He flails his limbs out to the side. That's the best kind of salute. No like this, just like arms out to the side like you're shaped like a K. Oh, here's my guy. Oh boy. 
Another strange room and another strange person. I wish these telephone lines came with nameplates or something. Sheesh. Oh, wait. What am I doing with the trick? Why am I doing a trick? Okay, well, we have no dead bodies, to my knowledge. We have some knightly armor, a fruit basket. Seems like we could probably apply gravity to that one. Um, those kind of look like noses. That that right there doesn't that look kind of like a nose. That thing up in the top middle. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, that right there. It's a nose. Um. All right, we've got fan. That's probably a thing that I can do something with. Which will probably make this flag blow. Oh, he's got medicine. Oh, oh dear. Oh, sir. Documents. Medicine bottle. I'm curious what he's doing with that. Water pitcher. Oh, I can flap the flag. Okay. Ah, not quite enough. Hold on, no, we can do this. No! It's not very effective. Oh, no, there's really not much else I can do here. Hmm. <sighs> so it's just a gentle flap. No, I don't think that moves enough. I'm really not sure what else to do. I mean, I can just cause all sorts of trouble. Well, have a good evening, Phil. Enjoy your uh, enjoy the rest of your night. A song about missile that's on the soundtrack but not in the game. Did they just record a song about a good dog for, for, for fun? Uh, I don't think that's giving me enough time. I'm not sure what else I can do here. teleport back to the apartment? I don't know if there's anything else I can do here, though. Still typing away passionately, I see. She'd type her fingers to the bone to complete her tale of love, I imagine. The little girl with the fever seems to be sleeping now. I hope she's having sweet dreams. Mr. Prime Minister? Hmm, <laughs> I guess not. What else can I do here? Nothing. Okay, I am... I'm stuck. Yeah, there's nowhere else I can go, no other items I can interact with. Uh, 
I'm just gonna go around a bit. This line doesn't seem to be working. Oh, that's right. Guess I can't go there right now. Okay. All right, so for some reason I can go back and forth between the troubled man's office and the ladies' red apartment. He still appears to be deeply troubled. If he doesn't have any work to do, why doesn't he just go home and go to bed? Maybe the fact he doesn't have any work to do is what has him deeply troubled. I have quite a bit of work to do myself. Don't know which of us is in a more enviable situation, though. You're... 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 you're dead, dude. You're a dead guy. So, I think the living man is in a better situation. <laughs> All I can do is flap. All I can do is flap. There's gotta be something I'm missing. Maybe I forgot something basic? But see, it's not even close. Like, I think that's as far out as I can get it. And you can see it's not even close. There's gotta be something else I can do. But I can't, like, I can't go up any further. And all of that, that is as far out as I can get with that. We're just gonna keep teleporting back and forth between these two places. Because I can't think of what else to do. And this seems better than being stuck. Nope. Okay, I can't do anything there. I gotta be able to do something here. Am I forgetting one of my moves? Maybe I'll look in my book. I'll look in my book. I have a book. Let me use it. Right. Sissel. Connection between him and Lynn. He was trying to make a deal with a mysterious old man tonight. Here's Lynn. Hitman is after her again. Doesn't she look kind of like Mona? Oh, that's right. Ray of Light. Okay. Nearsighted Jigo. Oh, oh, we've got more stuff here. Lynn's neighbor, the perfumed lady. She lives with an apartment decor in an apartment decorated in red with her daughter. Apparently, she's a novelist who moved here due to a disagreement with her husband. She refuses to answer the phone anymore tonight. Feverish Firecracker. The daughter of the woman in purple, her name is Amelie. Because of her fever of 102, she isn't going out for her lesson tonight. Apparently, she and Camila are friends. She's worried about her father's birthday. Oh, which is this fellow here. Careworn gentleman. He sits alone in his stately office, tearing out his hair. He is frantic about his wife, the woman in purple, who left him. Alright, an apartment with a strangely thick atmosphere. The woman in purple lives here. It's, it's a world apart from Lynn's apartment next door. Lynn's home. Because the little girl dropped the receiver in the fish tank, the phone line doesn't work. A music box was hidden in the ceiling. A stately office that gives off a cold, heavy air. A man sits alone, tearing out his hair in anguish. I just don't know what else I can do. A 
Oh. Hold on. Can I knock the water pitcher over towards his, his paperwork and make him sad? Okay. No. There's got to be something I'm missing. This is the first time in the game that I've gotten stuck. Something else down there to get to. And there's nothing I can do with any of these inanimate objects. <sighs> there's got to be something I'm missing here. No? It's just, yeah, it's just, it's not there. <sighs> Do I want to, wait. There was something, I thought there was something else there that I could see, but I guess not. Cause I can't reach anything in her office. And I can't reach anything in his office but this. Like, I think I'm trying to... Oh, am I just... Am I just getting to the telephone? From his house? Am I going to call someone else? No. Oh, I can go to the junkyard from here. Oh, am I going to rescue Lynn? Ah. Not much time has passed since I was here last, but the situation has changed. Okay, yeah, because I know that there's the kitchen, the chicken kitchen, chicken kitchen, and I need to rescue the girls from being threatened by another assassin. Um, but I thought I was gonna have to do something else in the guy's office to get to do the thing that I had to do, but I could just call, apparently. So now I know about him and about his office, but I can't do anything there yet. So basically you eavesdrop a little bit. You see that, man, they are a hot mess. And then you can come here. So. The music is so good in this game. All right. Oh, there's some dudes. Oh, they're investigating my body. Looks like they're examining my body. I wonder who they are. I mean, I would assume doctors, but hold up. The doctor who's actually examining me is blue. You'll notice these other two guys are not blue, but that guy is blue. So he's an alien. They're aliens, I don't know. Oh, Ray is still here. And beside them, a certain somebody else wriggles and bounces happily. I wonder who that person really is, too. Welcome back. You weren't gone very long. What's going on here? The police are here to start the criminal investigation. You know, into your murder. My murder case, eh? Where is Lynn? Is she all right? So you found out her name already, did you? I'm impressed. Oh, that's right, there was a bird. Excuse me, eek, Lynn. 
It sounded like she was in some kind of immediate danger. Not to mention the fact Hitman is after her again. Well, you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. She was just taken into custody a few minutes ago. Oh no, but we've seen there's a blue guy with the cops. Which could mean nothing. It could just be that there's blue people in this world and they're just another kind of people. Or it could mean that that guy is working for the bad guy. Hmm. Well, I guess they must think she's a suspect. Custody? You mean she was arrested? But why? I don't know. I'm just a desk lamp. Like hell you are. <laughs> oh, Ray. Hmm. I'd better see what I can find out. All right. Umbrella. Traffic sign. Traffic cone. X. Quite a thing, huh, this case? Yeah, one of our own. A murderer? Heads will roll over this. And she's a rookie, too. I heard she was carrying out some crazy investigation. Okay, so she's a cop. Interesting. Rookies aren't given crazy assignments like that. Not even rookies like Lynn. Okay, so this is some nice dialogue that sets up that she's new, but extremely good. So when they say not even rookies like Lynn, that's indicating Lynn is better than average. Also, in case you hadn't figured out it was Lynn, that lets you know it's Lynn. Yeah, but I heard she was special, in quotes. She's got strong ties to Inspector Cabanella of the Special Investigation Unit. Am I Cecil Cabanella? Am I Inspector Cecil Cabanella of the Special Investigation Unit? Maybe I am. Huh. I plan on moving up the ladder on my own merits myself. Well, we detectives shouldn't just be standing around gossiping. Never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. <laughs> He's so blue. I'm sorry. All right. I gotta admit, my body, like, Hemorrhaging weird hand-drawn dust is really disconcerting. I think we can safely assume the cause of death was the bullet he took in the chest. Bring the stretcher. I'll look into the rest back at the lab. Would you mind waiting here for a bit, Doctor? Inspector Cavanella, head of the Special Investigation Unit, is on his way now. Okay, so that's not me. <laughs> there goes that theory. It wasn't very long lived. <laughs> Special investigation unit? What do they want with a case like this? I don't know, but Cabanella is our top investigator. We don't want to get him all bent out of shape or there'll be hell to pay. That's why we have class two swears allowed on this stream. Don't see what that has to do with me. I don't really get what Cavanella wants to come for either. It's probably just a big lark for him, but it makes things tougher on us. Hey, watch what you say behind his back. Never know who might be listening. Like me. Like me. Ding a ding. That guy has zany hair like I have zany hair. No, he's got zanier hair. Sorry, Cecil. This guy is zanier than you. Ah, the tension of a crime scene. <laughs> what? Yeah, nothing like it, baby. Oh my god. 
they are not afraid to animate a character. <laughs> Oh my god. They had so much fun with this. Yes, I suppose you could say that he's a disco detective too. <laughs> yeah, if I could do accents, I feel like a southern drawl would not be a bad choice. But unfortunately, I don't do accents. I'm barely even doing voices. So... <clears throat> Evening, boys. How's it looking? Inspector Cabanella! Thank you for coming. Cabanella. That sounds like... It should be pronounced differently. But I don't know how, so we're gonna just gonna roll with it. Allow me to report, sir. Fine, fine. You just hold that thought. I'm gonna make a little phone call first. So this is the head of the Special Investigation Unit. He seems, uh, unique. Updated the phone book. <laughs> They're like, hey, do you want to see what your sassy character has to say about him? Oh, man! We've got some more details. She's a detective, apparently. Has been added to Lynn. Oh, man. Let's look at this. Super extra guy. Oh, we've got a couple of these goons. Oh! Actually, it looks like the detective goons are also slight. Yeah, they're just sort of drawovers. That's nice. Okay. The green detective. A member of the police who's investigating my murder. His partner is a blue detective. He works under Inspector Cabanella. The blue detective. A member of the police who's investigating my murder. His partner is the green detective. He works under Inspector Cabanella. Yes, I did just read basically the same thing. Odd blue doctor. He's apparently a colleague of the detectives. He's examining my corpse. There's something off about him. See, he's blue. They mentioned that he's blue. So that's not an accident. It is worth noticing. Lanky and loose lawman. <laughs> I hope that there's people who cosplayed this guy and that they do the little dance. The head of the Special Investigation Unit. His name is Cabanella. Apparently, he's the group's top investigator looked up to by his men. He seems to dance through life. He has some kind of special tie to Lynn. Oh my god. What a design. Alright, and has been added to the phone book in the junkyard. The police have begun their investigation and have deemed my death a murder. All right. Anything? Okay, I can overhear these guys. Well, here he is for his big lark. Aren't you going to confront him about it? I'm going to make my report. Yeah, that's about what I figured. This guy looks so serious. Let's overhear this phone conversation, shall we? What kind of Zelda character design is that? <laughs> deal me the deal. How's it going over there, baby? I don't think he's supposed to sound Southern. I think he's supposed to sound disco. <laughs> going? How is it going, you ask? You'd like to know how it's going? I would say it's going well enough, about fair to average, if I had to say, yes, it's going all right. Okay. I like to write. I like to write dialogue. I used to be terrible at it, but I worked really hard, and I, I've had people tell me I'm good at writing dialogue, which is a great feeling when there's a thing you used to be bad at, now you're good at it. Turns out you can do that. But I'm also very wordy. Shocking. Um, and I'll have people critiquing my writing and they'll critique my dialogue. And a lot of times, like, you know, there's really good insight. But sometimes you have a character who talks a lot and people will be like, this is too wordy. And you're like, okay, well, I need to cut words in this story because it's too long for whatever I'm trying to do with it. So I will cut words in the description. I will cut words in what's happening. I will cut sections of scenes rather than reduce 
the number of words in a wordy character's dialogue because that is an important character definition. I have strong feelings about this as a person who talks a lot. Also, sometimes people are very nervous talkers. This weird hippie... What are, what are Saria's people called? The kids at the beginning of Ocarina of Time? Oh, what are they called? Kokiri, yes. This is an overgrown Kokiri. <laughs> and this overgrown Kokiri child, maybe a disco Kokiri child person, um, seems to repeat themselves. <clears throat> Not the man I was hoping to talk to there, baby. Like, so a pending baby at the at, at the end of the way you talk is not what I think of. It's not a southern mannerism. It's an Elvis mannerism. Like, it's a, like, sexy rock pop musician dude thing. Disco Curie. Oh, my God. Disco Curie. Oh, yes, this is a disco carry. I'll go with that. Do me a favor and put that other nice man on the horn now, would you? That's a nice fellow. If it has anything to do with this park, I'm the one to talk to. I'm the guardian of this park. Yes. Kokiri. <laughs> ah, sorry about that, Inspector. I just got here. Well, glad to hear you made it. That other fellow just about threw me for a loop. Started blathering something about being guardian of the park or some such. Yes, him. Sorry about that. Well, start doing your staking out thing, baby. And buzz me if anything comes up. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's got to spin the phone before he hangs it out. I could go to the park if I wanted to. Maybe I will. Now then, sir, if I may make my report, sir. I'm sorry. He just, like, the force, the force of him saluting, like, shakes my controller. It's very impressive. Doc! Yoo-hoo! Oh, Doc! Talking to me? I need you to handle this case with your finest care and attention. Would you do that for me, Doc? don't need you to tell me how to do my job. And you, I'd like to see the suspect now, if I may. Lynn, sir, I asked her to let herself be taken into custody voluntarily, sir. She's being detained in the junkyard superintendent's office right now. Super's office, eh? Super! And where's that? <laughs> That's a fun wordplay. For anyone who doesn't, super is short for superintendent, which is the person who oversees something or is in charge of something. But it's a play both on the fact that super is used to be a short form of superintendent and also super means great. See, it's clever. The writing is really good. <laughs> I would not have guessed that this was translated if I didn't know that it was translated because the dialogue is so full of fun wordplay that feels really natural. Just beyond where you parked your bicycle, Inspector. I'll go interview the suspect then. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be like from the 70s, actor, TV something, 60s, you know. Why does he do that? Carry on, boys. Good luck, sir. He's gonna walk. For a certain definition of the word walk. <clears throat> this is a man who enjoys his life. Will you? That Inspector Cabanella, he sure has a strange air about him. 
You can say that again. And I've never seen anybody use stairs the way he does. I love that his weird animation is actually called out in game. Amazing. I hear he's dancing his ways up the stairs of promotion that same airy way. And I hear Lynn is his personal favorite. What's the deal between those two? Hey, how should I know? It's identifying my body as Sissel, so I guess maybe that's actually my name. I can't go talk to Ray. I'm Ray doesn't want to talk to me anyway. All right. Cleared the A Curious Soul challenge. Unlocked the song A Curious Soul. 444 ghosts. Does that mean that I've moved 444 times? Oh, four. See, because four sounds like death. So it's four three times. Amazing. I want to get up there, but maybe I can't get up there. Yeah, I can't get there. Yeah. Right? Well, now what? I could go to the park. I might as well see what's going on there. A soul ethernet cable. It appears to be the entrance to a nearly deserted, dimly lit park. The voices of two young people drift over to me on the breeze. Stop the park from being turned into a housing site! Protect the park, the rock of the gods! Is this what's going on? Is this actually going to be like the gods versus the aliens with humanity and unwitting pawn in their game? Maybe. Uh, sorry, but could you do that somewhere else? I'm a little busy right now. I don't have time to talk. I suppose you think I'm a man of dubious character. A questionable person. No, I, uh... But if an objective person were asked, they might think you were a little suspicious yourself. As two suspicious characters, shouldn't we take the time to converse with each other? Oh boy. All right. But just for a minute. There, I like your attitude. I like it very much. Let's relax and talk a while then. The night is young and so are we. Is that... Is he flirting? Oh man. I see I am his leaflet. <clears throat> There's not really much else I can do. So, I guess we're not supposed to be here yet, but... <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go back to the junkyard. Maybe there's something... That I haven't figured out. So, are you going to have to deal with me teleporting around a lot? Because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not very good at figuring out where I'm supposed to go in games. There's just, there's not anything I can do anywhere but my own body here. Oh, I can listen to this guy, okay. I think we can pretty safely assume this was the murder weapon. I like that he's got like little tongs to hold onto the, onto the gun. Puts it on a plate. Oh no, that pistol. Yup. Same model as the p pistols you detectives carry around. You don't think it's Lynn's, do you? This is not good. If it's hers, if it is hers, it's all over. So Lynn is a detective, and the murder weapon might be her pistol. What could it all mean? Or somebody else could have gotten involved. You never know. What could it all mean? That's good question and I don't have the answer to that. I just, I can't, I don't. I want 
to get up there? Oh, pistol, I can examine it. So, this is the weapon that took my life. A pistol, eh? My memory seems to be hazy on pistols. But I have seen them before, that's for sure. Let's see. This part right here is... Ha! He shot the gun. <laughs> oh, fool! If you want to fire the thing, aim it in your own direction. I didn't fire it. I'm the victim here. This is the act of someone who's jealous of my abilities as a detective. Well, what are you glaring at me for? I'm hardly jealous of you. Well, I guess that proves it's a real gun. Bang. What was that? Is that what I think it was? The sound of a gun. Somebody's been killed. Look at the way this guy has posed. I've got a bad feeling about this. Every time that phone rings, it's bad news. It's like that old riddle. Which came first, the ringing of the phone or the crime case? That's not an old riddle, Ray. Um, if you say so. Somebody's gonna be dead and I'm gonna have to go through the phone to save them. Ah, oh, there you are. Do me a favor and have the doc come to the super's office, would you? Uh, he seems pretty busy at the moment, sir. Which one are you, the green one or the blue one? Huh, uh, oh, uh, I'm the green one, sir. Listen, Greeny, get the good doc over here this instant. Or I'll see to it you never wear a green suit again. Yes, sir. I'll send him right up, sir. Yeah, I was going to say I'm about to tele teleport to the super's office. Super's office. Please, doctor. Go to the superintendent's office immediately. <sighs> if I must. Look at the way he walks. He walks funny. They all walk funny, though, so it's fine. I gotta go eavesdrop. Wh what's going on? Don't ask me, but something seems really, really wrong. That shot sounded like it was coming from somewhere around the maintenance building. Okay, well, we're gonna go teleport away from my dead body to the super's office. <coughs> Let's do it. Probably save at some point. Yet another gunshot rings out in the lonely junkyard on the edge of town. The sound gives me the feeling a new death will be waiting on the other side of the line. Apparently, I'm not the only one the Reaper's interested in tonight. But as long as there's anything I can do about it, I don't plan on letting anybody else die. Should be. I don't plan on, let, on letting anybody else die. Cleared chapter three. Okay. Save. Yes. Continue playing. Yes. Changing a person's fate is no easy task. Especially when their fate is death. The scene at the other end of the line is pretty much what I expected. All except for one thing. Isn't... Isn't that what... Isn't that what... Columbo says? Oh, and one more thing, right? Is that his name? Is that the right guy? Or did I get the name wrong? The detective that everybody loves so much. Okay. I've never actually watched his show, but I don't know if this is intentionally phrased in a way to make you think of that, but I, I think probably not, but that's what I'm thinking of because it's detectives. Oh, wait, did she get shot again? 
No, Lynn, hang in there, baby. It looks like some piece of trash shot her from the top of the pile of garbage outside. Here, let me take a look at her. Maybe there's something I... Sorry, can't allow that, Pigeon Man. I investigate and you superintend. You have your job and I have mine. <clears throat> Let's leave each to his own profession, shall we? Yeah, well, here's what I think. How much of a pro can you be if you let her get shot right in front of you? Hi. Anyway, have it your way. I'll stay out of your hair. Oh man, I get to see what Sissel has to say about these guys. <coughs> this is a funky bass line. He keeps his key underneath the bird on top of his head. Also, his hair has spikies and he just slid down the banister. Doc, what took you so long? Quit dragging your feet. Who are you to shout at me? Now let me have a look at the victim. I haven't even looked yet, but I can already tell you she's dead. Her second death of the night, actually. Okay, I can swivel this. <clears throat> I can examine the notebook. I could go to her. What's up with this blinding pink notebook? Somebody stuck it behind the bookcase at a haphazard angle. Maybe that's the superintendent's way of tidying up. I'm sure that's not significant in any capacity. Oh shoot. Okay, so I'll be able to turn that on and it'll do something. <clears throat> there we go. I found her. Unconscious this time as well, eh? Where am I? She's coming too. What happened to me? Excuse me? Are you ignoring me? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm still not used to talking with dead people, you see. Dead? So I'm dead, huh? Hmm. Try as I might, I can't seem to remember who I am. She's starting to remind me of me. Who am I? Everybody seems to call you Lynn, if that's any help. Lynn, huh? Pretty cute name. And apparently you're a detective, too. Detective? You mean that super cool kind of cop that solves crimes and upholds justice? Sounds like a pretty good, pretty subjective description, but yes, that kind of detective. Hey, wait a minute. Are you starting to remember something? There's no time to lose. Something really unusual is going down in this town tonight. Yeah, I certainly won't argue with the really unusual part. Why is it that guy? That's not your face, you know. Take another look. You're the dead one. Oh, right, of course. It'd be pretty heinous if I looked like this, I guess, wouldn't it? I don't know if heinous is the right word. There, now this is more like it. Something really unusual is going on in this town tonight. Could it have anything to do with my death, I wonder? Tell me, what is going on in this town tonight? Don't ask me. Huh? I can't remember a thing. I think it's probably because I'm dead. Ah, everything is so confusing. Can't you do something? Hey, you're asking the wrong guy. But I've got some things to ask you about. I don't know if I can ask both, but I'm gonna ask. If I get the bad ending, then I get the bad ending, and we'll start over. 
I'll ask, I can either ask about me or Lynn's death. I'm gonna ask about me first. I'm looking for the answers to the questions, who am I and why was I killed? Do you know anything that might help me? The only thing I know right now is that my name is Sissel. Your name is Sissel, huh? I think so. It rings some kind of bell anyway. I think I was killed tonight while I was meeting with you. So you must at least know me, I think. I was meeting with you? Yes, in the junkyard outside. <coughs> That's right, I forgot he died with his butt in the air. Yeah, it's coming back to me. I remember now. I knew it. I knew you were the lead I needed. But I'm so sorry. I don't think I can help you. Well, why not? Because I don't know you. What do you mean? I thought you said you remembered me. No, I said I remembered something. I remembered the fact I don't know you. No way. Okay. I can ask more things. Okay, I'll just keep asking questions. I'll ask about Lynn's death. Two strangers also popped up, but we'll just keep going down the list. So I died, huh? Yes, apparently. I'm very sorry. How could this have happened? And after I just passed my test finally this year. Oh, she looks so sad. <clears throat> my exciting career of catching the bad guys had just begun. Oh, she really is a rookie. <clears throat> and now look at me. Why do I have to go and die in an old junkyard like this? Poor kid. The shock is setting in. And so I told her everything that happened tonight. About ghost tricks, possessing and manipulating objects, and about going back four minutes before a person's death. This actually isn't the first time you died tonight, you know. You were already shot and killed once before tonight. And you saved me? That's right. You don't remember? <clears throat> They're like, hey, in case it's been a week since you played this game, Lauren, we're going to give you flashbacks. Hmm, yes, I think I do remember something like that happening. Vaguely. Yes, I did get shot by a blue man dressed all in black. I guess this means that even if a death is erased, the memory of it remains. So I died twice already tonight. Wish I knew what to say to her. Guess I'll just have to wait until she recovers a little. Hey, I bet that's some kind of record, don't you think? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so she's kind of a dummy. Got it. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Looks like she's pretty much recovered already. I'll ask about two strangers. So you don't know me, huh? Nope, wish I did. So do you suppose we're just two strangers who happened to meet tonight? No way, I don't think it was any accident. Why in the world would I be way out here in the middle of nowhere for no reason? I was asked to come here tonight. Asked to come? By who? Should be by whom? Anyway. Can't you kind of guess where this is going? You're kidding. Y you mean... Bingo! By you! I asked you to come here? But why? That's what I was going to ask you! Okay, alright, that makes sense. So, <clears throat> I contacted her presumably because I had some kind of a tip. Why did you ask me to come here tonight? Way out here in the middle of nowhere. You gotta be kidding me. It goes without saying, but I don't remember. Oh, everything is so confusing. Can't you do something? Hmm, Lynn. I'm not saying you owe me or anything, but I have a favor to ask. What is it? In the next four minutes, you'll probably come back to life. When you do, do you think you could try to find out about me before tomorrow's before tomorrow morning? Who I am and why I was killed? I'm really sorry, but I can't make any promises. I've been arrested for murder. <laughs> Under suspicion of murdering you. <laughs> Minor detail. Slight difficulty, just tiny difficulty. Why not? I don't remember very clearly right now, but I think I was investigating a case tonight. A case that is very, very important to me. So even if I come back to life, I don't think I'll have time to find out anything about you. 
I know that's a terrible thing to say to the person who saved my life once already. I'm really, really sorry. I see. That's too bad. To be fair, that's exactly what he did when Ray asked him to investigate something. So, Cecil, how does it feel? Taste of your own medicine? But I'm afraid I'm still going to ask you. Ask me what? Ask you to save me. Even though I probably won't be able to help you. I know it's selfish of me. I really apologize. But I just can't die. Not yet. Not like this. I'm investigating something important tonight. I think maybe that might be the reason I was killed. But I still want to solve the case in spite of all that. I'm sure it's all connected. <clears throat> Am I out of line? Didn't, tell, didn't I tell you a minute ago you don't owe me? Huh? I'm certainly not going to treat your life like some kind of bargaining chip. I'll save you. What you do after that is up to you. See, this is a character-defining moment. He's like, I'll ask you a favor, but you don't owe me the favor. You know? Thank you. So, you ready to go back? Back to four minutes before you got shot? Shall we rewind time, folks? Let's do it. Okay. Lynn's second death. I'm heading back in time now to rewrite her fate. Faced with those circumstances, she should have just lied and promised to help me. But she didn't. That's when I knew I could trust her. Eight eighteen. <clears throat> oh, that's her pink notebook. I have a bad feeling about this. Yes, sir. Detective, is everything okay? Oh, uh, I was hungry, so I was trying to get something delivered. What? Don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. You should leave jobs like that to me. Is chicken all right? One chicken dinner. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not feeling very hungry anymore. I would like to go back to the station for a minute, though. You would? Oh, uh, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Inspector Cal Cabanella is on his way. He'll be here any minute. Evening, patrol man. Good evening, Inspector Cabanella, sir. Nice work. Now do me a favor and take a little patrol around outside, would you? That's a nice fellow. Yes, sir. Is this guy, what is this guy's deal? I don't know if I trust him. Yo, how's it going, baby? Inspector Cabanella, what are you doing here? I thought the Special Investigation Unit had an important top secret assignment tonight. What does that matter at a time like this when my limbs in crisis? I appreciate it, sir. Wait a minute. Did you just say crisis? Don't tell me I'm being suspected. Suspected of shooting that pointy haired man in the red suit? I mean, I've never even met the guy before. <laughs> Never, baby. Oh, well, uh, before tonight, I mean, he asked me to meet him here. He said he had important information about the big case I'm working on. He's the one who contacted me. I see, I see. But it's funny, isn't it? I took a look at the list of cases your station is handling right now. And I didn't see you listed as involved on any big cases. <gasps> she lied. You know I don't suspect you, baby. Just trying to clear things up. You're not the type to ever shoot anybody. Hey, who knows you better than me, baby? You know, if anything ever happened to you, are they in an inappropriate relationship with an unhealthy power dynamic? I guess we'll see. I'd never be able to look him in the eye again. Oh, maybe not. 
yeah, no, this may, maybe that's, maybe he's her uncle and that's her dad that he's talking about. Inspector Cabanella, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, and what's that? And I want you to answer honestly. Is it tonight? Is that when it's happening? I have no idea what you're talking about, baby. Get down! It seems to me that baby is indeed under suspicion. By Inspector Cabanella? No, he's not like that. Just for the record, did you shoot me? Me? I would never do anything like that. Anyway, it looks like the, the hitman fired from outside. It'd be hard to prevent the bullet from coming in, though. In any case, let's just give it a try. Our four-minute game. <clears throat> I have to move her out of the way. Trick time. All right, so there's a motor. It's a fan. Oh my god, there's so much going on here. Where will this take me? It takes me over here. The microscope and photos. These pictures are old. What are they of? Little fragments of rock? And the fragments are glowing. Do you know what these are? Sorry, but I've lost my memory. Probably not the best person to ask. That's okay. I was only being polite. I didn't really think you'd know. Ouch, the lady's tongue can be sharp. Uh, I can hear what you're thinking, remember? I know. Good one. There's some mad science happening here. What could this be? It looks like a giant nail clipper. You think so? Do you know what it is? <sighs> Why did you have to ask me? Couldn't you see I was looking away at <laughs> She doesn't know what the microscope is? Huh? It's one of those sciencey things that scientists use. <laughs> oh my god, the writing of these characters is ridiculous. Ordinary people like us don't have to know what it is. I don't remember what science is. <sighs> but it's apparently something Lynn doesn't like very much. Alright. So mad science is happening. Let's see, we're going to go down here. Is there anything I can do here? No. Yes, sir. I'm probably not going to do this right, right, because... All right, so... Oh, I missed the chance to see what she was thinking. Hey, don't scare me like that. You could shorten my life. Poor little me. Um, your life is already over, actually. You don't have to rub it in. Okay. Okay, so I can startle her some. would like to go back. Okay. Oh, oh, this is conversation. They ordered me here to stand guard over this rookie detective, Lynn. Now that I'm really looking at her, she sure is cute. They told me to call the detective outside if she did anything suspicious. So here I stand. Hey, maybe I need to call the detective outside after all. She's so beautiful, it's criminal. Oh my god. All right, so he's gonna look at this book and call the guy in early. That's Lynn's notebook. Hey, wait a minute. I thought she was practicing a dance move when I came in. Nope. That was definitely suspicious, no question. I better report this. I wonder if I can make the call without her noticing.
What's up with this blinding pink notebook? Oh, that's mine! Isn't it adorable? <laughs> Why isn't your adorable notebook in your pocket? I panicked, okay? Don't you shove things in the bookcase when you panic? Who are you calling, anyway? It was personal business. So, her little adopted sister. What's up? I've been watching Lynn just like you told me to, and I noticed something suspicious. You did? So Inspector Cabanello was right. She was hiding her notebook when I came in. Her notebook, eh? Yes, sir. In a very suspicious manner and in a very conspicuous place. Anything else? Um, let's see. It's pink and it's a notebook. Anything else? Um, let's see. Come to think of it, she was using the phone when I came in, too, and referring to her notebook. Okay, someone will be over later. Don't let on you noticed anything. Hey, look at that! The phone line is glowing red! <gasps> I bet it would work if we tried it now. I bet you're right. The detective he's talking to is outside in the junkyard. And that's where the horrible hitman who's after me is, too. Let's go there. Why not? I don't know. They give me the option, I'm gonna take it. I've been waiting for you. Eek! What are you? A desk lamp that sounds like an old grandpa. Oh. I've been doing the wrong voice boost to Ray. <laughs> Alright. I guess I can try to switch. Oh my god, Carbonara does, like, I do almost call him Carbonara myself. So, like... <laughs> Alright. Shall I try to do a grandpa voice? I don't know if I can do a grandpa voice. Just call me Bray. Grandpa Ray? You just have to get the grandpa part in there somewhere, don't you? We're souls. We can choose any appearance we like. Which means you have no intention of showing us what you really look like, right? Dot, dot, dot. Now then, about that gunshot that took your life. I heard it way up on the upper level a scant few minutes from now. How am I going to get up there? The hitman is probably getting his rifle ready right now. Alright, I'm going in. I'll get him with those ghost trick thingies. I'm very sorry, young lady, but you don't have those powers. What? Why not? I'm afraid I don't know the reason, but only a special few have the powers of the dead. What? Are you saying I'm not special? That's not fair. Anyway, we don't have much time. Come on and hop in. Oh my god, what are you doing, buddy? Carry on, boys! Fate changed. <clears throat> that horrible hitman that's after me is upstairs, isn't he? Yes, apparently. In other words, we can't stop him if we stay down here. Let's go, then. I'm not really big on the idea of getting shot again. All right, Ray. Ah, yes. We fold the folding thing. And then we can go here. Oh, again? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. that vaguely. All right. Well, we made it. Now it's time to hunt down that horrible hitman. He must be around here somewhere preparing to take his shot. There isn't a lot of time. Let's try to find him fast. I'm going to make good and sure he understands what happens to people who point guns at others. There's a gleam in her eye that's absolutely blinding. Okay. 
Time is passing. Yeah, I know. I don't know what else I can do. What else can I do? Ah. Shoot! Did I get it? I did. Okay, thank goodness. I see my target. Time to go to work. I'll be head of the Hitman Division by, by next month now for sure. There he is! The horrible Hitman! I think his name is actually Tango, but that doesn't matter now. We have to stop him from shooting fast. Shoot! That did not seem to work. Oh! I can blind him. Oh. <clears throat> there, we put a stop to that shot, at least. We did it! So I'm safe now, right? Well, that changed your fate a little, but it didn't avert it completely. And we're not done yet. The hitman is a professional, and he really, really wants to be head of the division, apparently. I doubt blocking a shot here and there is really going to stop him. If you want to rough him up a little bit, I promise I won't put it in my report. Let's think of something else before he gets a shot in. Okay, so I got a little bit more time. Nothing else I can do there. Alright, so that's not gonna work. I don't know what else I can do here, though. There we go. All right. If I want that position, I have to be careful of even the least bit of light. Division head is my ambition for this year. Next year, my motto will be, if I want to be director, I have to be careful of even the least bit of scandal. So it sounds like he won't show up at spots where a light is on. And next year, I'm going to spread some nasty, scandalous rumors about him. <laughs> She's really silly. <laughs> All the question marks. Hey, did you turn that flashing light on? Wasn't me, it went off all by itself. Scared the heck out of me. Well, just make sure you lay off it. Don't want to waste any electricity. Have things gotten that tight? That's pretty sad. They're really putting a squeeze on us lately about using too much power at sites. They won't even let us use all our searchlights at once. Oh boy. We ought to be free to do at least that much, especially on a dark night like tonight. Okay, so we can't have all of the searchlights on. When we turn one on, the other's going to turn off. That's good to know. Huh, nothing happens. That's funny. I thought this lever was for swinging the crane arm around. I'd like to swing that horrible hitman around. Huh, this crane. I wonder if there's some other way we can use it. Okay, a nightstick. Sure what we're supposed to be doing here, so I confused this guy. Oh, 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 oh! Shoot, I'm gonna fail here. Yeah, I can't get over there in time. Hmm, he's saying something, but I can't hear him from here. Okay. 
Yeah, no, I'm in the right place here. Hey, I told you to lay off that thing. And I told you it wasn't me. Uh-oh, I think I might know what's going on here. This is the work of, you know. What? Hey, shut up. You're creeping me out. Ghosts, ghosts, ghosts. But you know as well as I do, the only explanation for mischief like this is Inspector Cavanella. What? So they tell tales about him as though he's a ghost, eh? But Inspector Cabanella is really a very nice person. Oh, did I guess wrong? I think I guessed wrong. The guy's probably on the other side. Okay, so that's a conversation I've already heard. Okay. All right. I know time is passing. I know I'm doing this wrong. Oh, look at that. One of the lights went out. There are three lights here all together. Apparently, we can't have all three of them on at once. Our station is crazy cheap when it comes to electricity. Just so another detective could see what he was doing the other day, I had to pedal my bicycle in place to work the headlamp. A very sad tale indeed. Sounds like they're taking things way too far. time here. Shoot. Hmm, this is quite a distance from the target. But I can't work under a spotlight after all. Never mind, a shot like this is nothing for a man of my skill. Mr. Division Head seems to like dark, gloomy places. I'd be happy to throw him in a dark, gloomy cell. Come on, Sissel, get him. Hold up, when did I become her assistant? Look, ah. Uh. Time till death three. I don't know what I'm doing here, so. She's gonna die. Where even is he? Where even is he? Oh, that didn't work. I guess I should have turned the other light on. Okay. <clears throat> Even if we block his shot, that'd only buy us a little more time. It doesn't look like we can discourage him from shooting completely. The only way to deal with evil is to crush it completely. This lady detective is just a little excessive. Guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. All right. So the first one I haven't done on the first try. I think that's okay, though. Uh, let's do it after fate change. Alright. Alright, so there's something else I can do with the crane, apparently. Alright, so there's some dialogue that we've seen before here. But I can... <laughs> oh. <sighs> I 
There's something else with the lever. What else can I use, can I do with the lever? up, didn't I? Uh-oh, the umbrella got knocked way over here. Now we can't go anywhere. Guess that's what you get for touching Inspector Cavanella's umbrella. He's always setting up traps for people. Darn, now what? Probably should have saved this umbrella for when we really needed it. Maybe we should start over. How do I do that? After fate change. Okay, we're gonna try this. Okay, so it turns out you can dead end yourself. That's good to know. <clears throat> All right, so what we're gonna probably wanna do is do something with that gate. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm afraid I'm probably going to brute force my way through here. All right. <clears throat> All right. and speed. I bet that would put a nice stop to my horrible hitman. If it just stopped him, that would be fine. But if it killed him, would I be obligated to save him? Anyway, let's just focus on the stopping part. Apparently, thinking about things too deeply isn't something you like to do. Just the right amount. That's the way detectives think about things. Now, come on, let's do this thing. Oh, I just love stamping out evil. It makes me feel so alive. Except for the fact that you're dead. All right. <clears throat> All right. I can do this. Hopefully he's not about to shoot her. <clears throat> In one of the other locations. Yeah, he totally is. Okay. <clears throat> Oh shoot, that one's on. That oh look at that. One of the lights went out. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to turn this one. <clears throat> this other one we're gonna turn back on. And that should hopefully make it so that. Oh shoot! Okay, well, I know what I'm supposed to do here. <clears throat> Whether I can execute it this time or not, I think I know what I'm doing. <coughs> so I want to turn off the one that I want turned off. Yes, I know time is passing. I know, I know. Yes, I know. Be all right. Mm -hmm. 
Shoot, okay, I ran out of time. Okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah, he's gonna shoot her from here. Or can I move that? Oh, I guess I can move that actually. Nope, I can. I could. I could squish him there. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see if we can do it this time. Okay. <coughs> see how much time we've got. Okay. We want to leave this one on. Come on, buddy. All right, I can do it, I can do it. Okay, so I want to go down to this one so I can go turn off that light. Oh, and then I can actually probably... Yes, I know time is passing. I know, I know. Good, okay. So you can do that all in one trip. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is then turn, shoot, turn on this light. And then come over here. <clears throat> no, not yet. So the guy should, yeah, so those those two areas are safe. So he should come out here. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Hmm, this is quite a distance from the target. Right. Got it! <laughs> okay. Huh. <clears throat> Did you hear a scream just now? I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Nobody said it was. There. We found a nice dark spot for our gloom-loving hitman. I think your death has just been erased. Again. Okay. One, try to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. One, try to figure out kind of how things are going to work. And then I got it. Not counting the time that I did the umbrella, which fortunately the game tells you, hey, you've entered an unwinnable situation. Perhaps you should not proceed. Okay. Why not, I wonder? Huh? Why don't I have powers like yours? If I could do things like you do, it could really help me pursue my case. Yeah, but you gotta be dead to use his powers, honey. Why only this special few, huh? It's not fair. That's the same thing the little doggy said, too. Well, I'm jealous of you, actually. You are? Why? Because your life can be saved, even if you die again tonight. I can save you with my ghost tricks. Nobody can save my life, though. Oh. These powers of the dead. Why have they chosen me? Will I find the answer to that question tonight? Cecil, I'm so sorry. Well, you're free to do as you please now. I guess it's a goodbye, detective. Will we ever see each other again? If you ever want to see me again, all you have to do is die. Okay, got it. I was kidding. 
Well, guess we'd better be getting back to the present. Fate averted. We did so good. Lynn has escaped death for a second time, but that doesn't mean she's out of the water yet. I'd better go see how she's doing. <clears throat> oh. Well. I guess those guys aren't here anymore. <sighs> it's my escape. <clears throat> Oh, telephone, telephone, telephone. I want the telephone. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to do here. Hi, dead me. Well, it looks like congratulations are in order. You erased yet another death. But I haven't gotten any further in solving my own mystery, though. But that woman holds the key. Don't forget that. Lynn, huh? Now that she's alive again, she's probably still being detained in the super's office. She won't be able to pursue her case without the freedom to move around. I better go back to the super's office and see her. Hey, Jellyfish Lightning, it's going pretty all right. I had a harder time with the puzzle that we just did, but I did figure it out, and then I figured out how to execute it. And it's nice to know that they have, in fact, set the timing up, that you can do multiple things, like on one round, you can be efficient with time, um, which I think if I hadn't had the time that I did where I so like blatantly mistimed it or where I had to kind of go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a lot I really kind of learned how the patterns of things worked so it's good but now we have to go say hello to Lynn because apparently as we learned from Missile once he's bonded with a soul he can talk to them once they're alive so we're gonna go talk to talk to Lynn that sounds like a good idea We've learned, by the way, that that guy sounds like a grandpa. Let's go to the super's office. I decided to go back to the office where Lynn was being detained. With her changed fate, her story was sure to change too. And maybe that would lead us in some new direction, some sweet guitar direction. Now that Lynn is alive again, I wonder what she's doing. She said she was investigating an important case tonight. Could that case be connected to me in any way? Now she's, and we know that she's doing this case unofficially, which is why she doesn't want her notebook to be found. All right, we got an illustration. We cleared chapter four. To save some time, save some game, save some save. Chapter 5, 8.34 p.m. When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained on suspicion of my murder. But I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate, or they can try to change it. Lynn is, is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. Fool! We told you not to let the suspect out of your sight! My apologies, sir, but I never th thought she would run away. Lynn is our angel, I mean, friend. I mean, she's like family to us. Angel, friend, or family, they all run when they have the chance. Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife ran away? <sighs> oh my goodness. This game doesn't just have swears, it has humor that you should be more grown up to understand. <laughs> The little kiddo is, like, not going to get the funny of this. I'm very sorry. I have no idea, sir. 
<laughs> You'll never make detective at that rate. You, yeah, at that rate, you need to you need to stay on top of things like how your superior, like how long it's been since your superior's wife left him. <laughs> uh, I know that's definitely how I know someone's promotable. Now, find Lynn. Yes, sir. Okay, so the rest of if Inspector Cabanella gets word of this, it's all over. So it sounds like the rest of the department loves Lynn, too. So it's not just Detective Cabanella viewing her as family. So our red-haired detective escaped, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Whew, she's fast. Well, guess I'll look around for leads. I love that he thinks to himself, even though it doesn't make a difference. Everyone can hear him. Anyone who could hear him speak can hear him, um, can hear him think the exact same way. Okay, so what are we doing here? There's a book up there I want to get. These guys are investigating. I want to hear what they're saying, so I'm going to go listen to them. I'm going to eavesdrop. That old pigeon man. Do you suppose he's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at all these precision instruments and complicated devices. I like that nobody knows what any of these are. There's like a microscope and nobody knows what it is. What are you doing? Sir, I think maybe this is how Lynn escaped through here. She couldn't possibly fit in that tiny little elevator. Oh, I don't know, sir. Lynn is pretty slim. Fool, don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion? This, <clears throat> this man has some issues. To this day, I still don't know how much my wife really weighs. Oh my God. What is wrong with you, man? I'm very sorry. I had no idea, sir. Huh, you'll never make detective at that rate. Anyway, where is that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir. He went through the door behind me, sir. Door's locked. He can't go that way. It won't open. Apparently that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. Yeah. He's doing science. He's doing science on what looks like a, a glowing meteor, perhaps, that has fallen. He's got maps of the city and photos of a glowing rock. So a meteor and a microscope. There's going to be aliens. It's going to be aliens. You better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir. All right. I could swear I just saw this thing move. Don't tell me. Could it be? It sensed the tension between me and the detective and moved to get away from it. That was an unexpected tangent. <laughs> You're telling me. I'll never make detective at this rate. What I need is some sort of achievement. A feather in my cap. If only I could find a helpful lead. That might do the trick. A helpful and blindingly obvious lead is staring you in the face right now. I don't know if this is what we want to do, but... Oops, that's the wrong way. Hi, Achman. Ah! They found the pink notebook. Huh? This is Lynn's notebook. If I give this back to her, it might spark something between us. Hmm, what to do, what to do. This is a very complicated matter. What have you got there? What this? Oh, uh, um, this is, um, wait a minute. Is that? Yes, sir. It's Lynn's notebook. Notebook, eh? Come to think of it, there was something about that in the report. 
something about her looking at her notebook and making a phone call. It's going to be calling her sister or something. This must be it. This telephone number with the big circle around it. These guys are real detectives. They're really good at detecting. Aren't you impressed with their powers of deduction? I am. Aren't you curious to know who she was calling? I am. I really am, sir. I'd like to know. Oh. But I don't have any ulterior motive for wanting to know, though. No, sir. No, sir. This number might be an important lead. I'd better check it out. Gonna go call. Let me in the phone, let me in the phone, let me in the phone. Hello, to whom am I to whom am I speaking, please? Yes, hello? This is a criminal investigation. We need your cooperation. Hey, I know that voice. Is that you, Detective McCaw? Oh, is that Officer Bailey? What's up, sir? You don't usually call this late. Oh, uh, did you get a call from one of our detectives, Lynn, earlier? From Lynn? Yes, I did. She calls every night. Maybe she senses it's about to happen. Did she say anything special? No, not really. Was something wrong? Yes, well, ahem. <clears throat> I might be contacting you again if I have any other questions. You didn't recognize your own department's number. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, now I can get to the office if I need to. That's where Lynn wants to go. I'm going to go file the report down at the station. I need you to be vigilant here. Excuse me, detective, but what is it? That notebook. Would you mind if I gave... Uh, never mind, sir. <laughs> Just stay on your toes. All right. What else can I do? Like, thing is, there's... Okay, there's a bowling pin and Matryoshka dolls? And some weird sciencey stuff happening here. Oh. I guess I don't get to go down to the basement where uh, where Lynn was. Maybe I have missed some optional content. Darn, there goes my chance to kindle a romance with Lynn. And I didn't even get any credit for finding the notebook. And I forgot to ask whose telephone number it was. If only I could crawl into this elevator and just disappear. If I disappeared, I wonder if Lynn would shed a tear for me. And here I thought he was examining the elevator for clues. No, I can't do anything. I can't get on his nightstick. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything else I can do here. I guess I'm going to have to go to the police station. I'm not sure why this is an option. wonder if there's like an Easter egg. If you wait long enough, the water will boil. All right. Shall we go to the next place on our map? Actually, you know what we should do? All right. All right, so he's updated me, the mystery. My name is Sissel. I apparently asked Lynn to meet me at the junkyard tonight. We've got that bit of detail. Okay, and Lynn says she doesn't know me. Ray. No, we don't have anything new. All right, the other hitman. <laughs> He's nearsighted Gigo's rival. He followed Lynn to the junkyard, but met with an unfortunate accident. All right. The green detective. Detective McCaw. The blue detective doesn't get a name yet. Detective with the cap. He works under Ex Inspector Capanella. He's performing a stakeout from the park. An odd man seems to be bothering him. Here's the guardian of the park. 
There's no other way to describe him except the man who is bothering the detective with the cap. His mission is apparently to protect the park. I'm sorry, he makes me think of Tingle. So I'm just gonna start calling him Tingle. Pigeon Man, the superintendent of the junkyard. He apparently also lives in the maintenance building. A man who loves and is loved by his pet pigeon. Or at least that's how it appears to be. What else is going on? What do you know that I don't know, Sissel? There's something. There's something. Typical cop. I guess he's one of the policemen investigating my murder. There are so many of them, I can't tell them apart. Navy Blue Square. He sits ramrod straight at his desk in some office. He's apparently known as Officer Bailey. <coughs> so by putting their names in their descriptions like that, um, that leaves room for the names that were given to be incorrect rather than naming the character that at the top of their profile. Mm. All right. I want to go visit other places, see if there's anything else going on. Sorry. You can't possibly expect me to actually continue the way I'm supposed to continue, right? sad voice of a young man drifts over to me on the breeze. Hmm. I suddenly feel so all alone. Yeah, he was a pain in the neck, but now that he's gone, I feel almost like I've been abandoned by the gods. He is a complicated young man. Yeah, there's nothing else I can do here. Amazing. I probably missed some other interaction between them. Oh well, that's fine. Troubled man's office, let's see if there's anything else going on here. Or if I've seen all the little bits and pieces that there are to see. We'll see. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Emma was right. Maybe it was a mistake I was ever born at all. But wait a minute! If I'd never been born, Amelie wouldn't be here right now. <sighs> it's gotten to the point where I don't know what my mistakes were. What defines a mistake, anyway? If something isn't right, does that make it a mistake? I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Sissel's just like, no, I don't want to deal with this man. She types like crazy. Looks like the novelist is still taken up with her prime minister. The atmosphere is so thick in this room, it's enough to make your eyes smart. Is that smoke? I think I better leave before this air suffocates me. Alright. Alright. I was already here, right? I started here? No, I didn't start here. Well, we're gonna take a look around. There's gonna be nothing here. But let's see. Oh, back again. Yeah, just checking to see if anything's new. Well, let me see. A moment ago, your corpse was taken away by the police. It was? Oh, I guess I'll never see my poor corpse again. Nothing is permanent. We lose everything in the end. But there are some things we can get back. Right, Ray? I suppose you are right. All right. <clears throat> I guess we'll go to the place we're supposed to go after we've done this. Just in case nothing, just in case something else has shown up here. He's all dejected. That cop looks miserable. He looks just like a drenched and dejected kitten in the rain. Hmm. I think he's starting to rub off on me. Tonight, in this town, on this planet, in this galaxy, in this cosmos. He's so sad. They drew custom portrait for him being sad. Is there any other man as miserable as me? 
My goal was to be a police officer as shining and as bright as a newly minted coin. But now I have to find another dream. I know, I'll be a newly minted coin as shining and bright as a police officer. <sighs> well, I'll say this much. It's nice to have a goal. He and that kid who wants to be a blitz ball, they can be friends. All right, well, you have fun with that, buddy. Are you ready to progress the plot? I believe I've done everything else I can. Uh, we have no choice but to progress the plot. Yeah, the cast is very himbo. Like, what's the thing is, I don't know how many brain cells they have collectively across the entire game. You know? Like. It's not a lot. Like, it's really not a lot. To be fair. To be fair. From what I remember of the Ace Attorney games, that's not too far off. That appears to be the way that they write people. <laughs> I think I think it's safe to say that the people who make these games have a lot of affection for dummies. Various flavors of dummies. You've got your nice dummies, you've got your nasty dummies, you've got your old dummies, you've got your young dummies, you've got your doggy dummies. Like, every flavor of dummy they appreciate. And will give you, and occasionally a character with brain cells. I feel like someone on the Ace Attorney cast. Oh! Oh, Phoenix's first partner. She's smart. What's her name? The older sister. She has brain cells. Mia! Yes, Mia. I, I seem to recall Mia is, is smart. She may, she may be the only one. <laughs> But it's fun because then you could have a character like that be a foil against the himbo energy of the rest of the cast. And so everybody else is like sweat dropping in confusion. I'm like, oh my god, this thing is going on. And she's just, oh my god, okay. And that lets us feel, I don't know. Mia Faye, yes, that's right. I'm trying to remember what her sister's name is. With the necklace. And then there's a little girl whose name is Pearl. What's the other girl? What's the other girl's name? There's Mia, there's Pearl, and there's... Maya! Okay. <clears throat> Maya's in the game a lot more. You would think I would remember her name. Um, but yeah, no. Well, there is something really charming about, like, lovably dumb but sincere characters. And that's... It's a very comedy thing. Like, I can't help but think of, like, Get Smart, you know? And 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 shows like that, where you have these really dumb but lovable characters. Um, I could never get into Mr. Bean. The Mr. Bean show itself is not good-natured enough for my taste. Um, Naked Gun, man. Yeah, no, like, th but there's, there's this particular flavor of dum-dums that I feel like all of these things have. <clears throat> anyway, I accidentally hit the button, so we're moving along the story. Oh, look at this guy! <coughs> you ready? What is... What is this music doing? I need to make sure that Wedge has listened to the soundtrack because I think that they're going for something. And I think that she, that's my, my bandmate Wedge, who's in the super high tops. By the way, the super high tops are gonna be playing at a thing in Austin soon. So if you're in Austin, you should go because I can't go. If you're in Austin, Texas, look up the super high tops and then go watch them play music and tell them that Lauren sent you. That would actually make my day. If somebody who doesn't know them went to hear them and then said, told them that Lauren sent them. 
I would be really happy. It's basically my entire band without me, but with somebody else. Um, I'm very close with them, so. <clears throat> anyway, Wedge likes music that this game, I think, is... The, the genres of music that this game is kind of referencing in some cases that I don't... I can't place what this is, but whatever this is. God, I'm going to lose my voice really bad in this game, aren't I? It has a lot of talking, and I talk a lot. Bad combination. All right. So we got these two cops. The one who slouches and the one who sits up. So Slouchy says, What was that call all about? I heard you say Lynn. And sitting up says, I don't really know. If I had to take a guess, though, I would probably say something's going on with her. Ha ha ha. The only place in the world where nothing is going on is inside your brain, Bailey. Arrgh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this pose. What? This game is so lovingly animated. Like this other guy over here shuffling his cards. Beautifully animated. This super, super serious ramrod stiff guy. That pose. Just beautiful. Amazing. What is that supposed to mean? I mean, I know what the words mean. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. <laughs> like, I'm just really curious about how this would translate. Like, what's that supposed to mean is an, kind of an idiomatic expression in English. So I wonder if it's not as idiomatic as I think it is, or if there's an equivalent idiom in Japanese. I don't know. <clears throat> That was my way of expressing indignation, putting it in the form of a question. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, Bailey is explaining to me what he's doing with language. Oh my god, just look at how beautifully animated. That was so good. I just hope Lynn's not doing anything crazy. I'm a fan of hers, you know? Okay, that's just creepy. Your entire department being fans of the young girl who works for you is creepy. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it right now. That's creepy. According to my log, Lynn has been calling here nearly every night as of late. So let's see. This is the place Lynn took all that risk to call, eh? But what exactly is this place? <clears throat> Cops. Memo. Oh, I could I could let the memo loose. Monitor. I can examine that. The screen shows rows of tiny rooms. The rooms are really, really small, and you can see right into them from the outside. Oh, it's the prison. Oh, it's a jail of some sort. I suppose the open bars keeps the rooms airy, but I wouldn't want to live in one myself. I wonder where these little rooms are. <laughs> I'm seeing parallels, okay? <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at the animation. It's just unnecessarily beautiful and detailed. Hey, what's this? Oh, that? I wrote down my duties for the night so I wouldn't forget any of them. Relatable. Relatable. Who here has ADHD and has to write everything down so you don't forget what you're supposed to be doing that day or that week? Let's still forget anyway. Anyway. You can't keep them in your head. It's not like you have a ton of duties after all. Have you tried just being better? This man asks. <clears throat> Use a little brain power. Ah, go look at his pose. Look at that pose. That's an amazing pose. What are you talking about? Weren't you the one who just said nothing was going on inside my brain? Huh. 
Didn't think you'd take it in quite that direction. So let's see this important to-do list of yours. Nine o'clock. Take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Wonder who that is. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. Nine o'clock, eh? That's when Lynn usually calls. Well, we can't let her talk to him tonight. Rules are rules. Aw, poor Lynn. Sure wish I could comfort her. Arg! What do you think you're doing? That's my important duties memo. That's okay. I've got it all memorized for you. Well, it's your duty to guard the telephone room, you know? Just make sure you do your job when the time comes. That guy's got a bo- a bo He's got wine on his desk. Look, he's got a glass of wine and he's playing cards. He's making a card house of cards. Oh, it's Lynn. Hello? Lynn. I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Please let me talk to him. I'm sorry, detective. I can't do that tonight. You can't? But you always let me talk to him before. Well, uh, the telephone room is already reserved. That That's why. Oh. By the way, is something going on with you tonight? What? Why do you ask? I got a call from one of the other detectives a minute ago asking about you. Oh, really? Well, I don't think it's anything important. Officer Bailey? Do you think you could keep this call just between us? Even if only for tonight? Well, I, uh... Oh. Well, I've got to go. I'll call again tomorrow. Oh. I can get down to the basement. Oh boy. Well, I guess I'd better call the detective division. Hold on there, Bailey. What? Don't tell me you're going to report that call from Lynn. What else can I do? It's my duty. Just write it down on one of your important to-do lists, and then I can wad it up for you and throw it away. You mean you want me to keep quiet about it? Well, isn't that what she asked you to do? How did, did, how did you hear that, buddy? I guess maybe the phone is loud? Well, yes, but tonight is kind of a special case for us. Can't you make a special exception for my Lynn to... <sighs> special case, huh? All right, you win. What? Is the special case. Alright, we got some news on these big dudes. <clears throat> he sits at his desk in some office and appears to be working. These guys all wear the same uniform. I can't tell them apart. Oh, uh, what? Oh, no. So the junkyard. The detectives who were investigating my case are gone, leaving behind only a quietly wriggling desk lamp. <clears throat> Pigeon Man's office. The junkyard superintendent apparently lives here too. We've got no data on the basement. We'll go there shortly. Uniformed Men's office. Is this some kind of office? Men wearing uniforms appear to be working, or maybe not working here. <laughs> Amazing. Park stakeout point. The park where the detective with the cap is performing a stakeout. An odd fellow who claims to be the guardian of the park is here too. I guess I won't be going there for a while. Maybe? I don't know. Alright. I don't know what they think is special about tonight. But for me, it's my only night. Lynn is on the other end of that telephone line. I better hurry. <clears throat> Yeah, no, that guy's the guy who's 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 making a thing with his cards has a glass of wine. I don't know what he's got under his desk. Oh, there's there's a couple of bottles too. Look, you can see. There's there's Oops, right here. 
there's, you can see there's bottles. Anyway. Shall we? I'm gonna see if anything else has changed. Or if it's only one per time change? One per chapter? Yeah, I think it's only one per chapter. Sorry, I gotta do this. This is how I roll. Right, it's Christmas. Okay. Alright, we'll go where we're actually supposed to go. But now I know I'm just gonna go everywhere besides where I'm supposed to go every time I get a new chapter. Oh, that's a gun on the wall. Wait, did she get shot again? Or is she sleeping? The bird is concerned. Lynn! Lynn! Oh, why couldn't it have been me instead? I'm no use as a police officer. There should have been me. Looks like she's dead. We better not touch her. Who did this? Who shot Lynn? <gasps> hey, excuse me, mister. You talking to me? That ball fell. This room, there aren't any other exits besides this one, are there? Do you see one? Huh? Then how did... We must have one of those mysterious locked room murder cases on our hands. One of those cases where the murderer vanishes into thin air in a vacuum. No, that's not... Okay. Just go find a real detective. I'll keep watch here. Yes, sir. <laughs> this guy's hair looks like a bomb. What a terrible turn of events. So now locked room murder, eh? Things never get dull for our redhead. I know of a certain inspector who might dance around at the thought of a mystery. But no mysteries for me. Not when I can rewind time and talk to the victim herself. Guess it's time to go back and see the truth behind this murder with my own eyes. <coughs> All right. All right, Lynn. What's up? Ha <laughs> ha! I died again. <laughs> like, a normal person might have this, like, shock. I'm in shock and so I'm laughing. But I think Lynn might actually be like, haha, that's funny. <laughs> Look at this, I died again. <laughs> this is just like, what? <laughs> I thought you'd be a little more grave under the circumstances. <sighs> pun, 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 pun. I wonder about the etymology of grave as in serious as in gravity, then grave as in the place where dead people are buried. <sighs> yeah, I, I guess Lynn is proud of it. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the third time after all. It's scary what a girl can get used to, don't you think? Frankly, the way her mind works is a whole heck of a lot scarier to me. So what happened this time? Who shot you? I don't know. What? I'd like to know myself. Who could have done it? Who shot me? Why are you asking me for? Oh boy. Guess I'll just have to go find out for myself. Okay, you just go and do that. Hurry along now. I get the distinct impression I'm being used here. Okay, looks like it's time to go back. Back to four minutes before your death. Gotta be drama. 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 Let's rewind time. Eight 
844, maintenance building, basement. How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? I once thought the truth could be discovered in darkness. Maybe it was just that the time wasn't ripe. What a weirdo. That red thing wasn't on the gun when I saw her this earlier. Is it gonna set off a Rube Goldberg invention and make that gun on the wall shoot her? When she opens the door. I love him sliding down the stairs. Such a great bit of character. Oh my god, thank you for the for the etymology. He hung up. The etymology. Oh, the kettle. Ha. Huh. <clears throat> On grave and gravity. That's funny. Dramatic and Latin. Amazing. Yeah, she's gonna step in, she's gonna turn on the light, and it's gonna set off a thing that's gonna- it's gonna light that candle, and that candle's gonna result in the thing shooting her. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just stand there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So the, the fun thing is that locked room murder mystery things are often something really, really basic. Like the person stood up too fast, fainted, hit their head and died. Or something went wrong and the person fell and hit their head and died. <clears throat> but people tend to overthink things really hard. And so what's funny is that a Rube Goldberg invention is literally overthinking things, finding like this incredibly unnecessarily um, complicated way to do a thing. And so actually some crazy, crazy Rube Goldberg adventure, invention answer is actually what happened to kill her. That's actually really funny. <laughs> <clears throat> the life expectancy of a chocolate teapot. That's a good, that's a good saying, Chrono. I like that. All right. Dialogue. Right. That's the truth behind our locked room murder. So the murderer was a mechanical murder machine? Murder machine? When I came into the room, it was pitch dark, so I turned on the light. That must have been what set it off. The murder machine, I mean. Can you please stop repeating the words murder machine? He doesn't like it. He thinks it's silly. <coughs> <coughs> ah, Terry Pratchett, of course. That old pigeon guy must have made it. But why? What could be the meaning behind this weird room? He's got something secret hidden there. There's a few broken things in there. There's like a broken television and a broken dartboard thingy up there. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, you'll have to stop some you'll have to find some way to stop that creepy machine. It's not Murderbot. No, if it was Murderbot, it would be a lot harder for us to stop. Well, actually, that depends. If we could sit there and have a conversation with Murderbot, then Murderbot would be like, "Oh. Oh, no. I don't want to murder this girl." But if we like we were actually having to physically stop Murderbot, that would be a lot harder than a Rube Goldberg machine. Although I would love to see Murderbot confronted with a Rube Goldberg machine. I think that would be hilarious. If you haven't read Murderbot yet and you're not familiar with it, it's actually very funny. I think of it as being cozy, but other people say it has entirely too much people shooting each other and evil corporations to be cozy. But the thing is, fundamentally, it's about good people banding together to help each other and stop bad things from happening. So that's pretty cozy. Um, I love them. I liked, I really loved the first book, but the more I read of them, the more I loved them. And now I'm obsessed. So yay, Murderbot. I'm sorry. I keep pushing those books, but they're really good. They're also going to make a TV show, but I'm not sure how they're going to pull that off. So we'll see. All right. <clears throat> 
Once Cupid fires his arrow, it's all over. Oh, that's why there was an arrow in that in that doll's hat. You know what, Cecil? I think this death might be easier to prevent than the others. Why is that? You know, because the murderer is mechanical. She has a point. I can't manipulate living creatures, but I can manipulate this machine. <clears throat> now I just gotta figure out how to stop it. When the four minutes ago me turns on the light, that's when the murder machine is set in motion, apparently. Looks like the key to solving this one is understanding this device. <clears throat> All right. Talking about locking up this room in darkness. I can do here. How did you manage to cram yourself into that tiny elevator? I've always liked small cramped places. Whenever I see a little hole or crevice, I always feel like crawling in. I have a friend who's like that actually. She came to Magfest with me one year and she stayed in a closet because we I like to cram a number of people in hotel rooms and she was like, oh, well, this is cozy. Nobody will step on me. And also, I just like being in small and closed spaces. And I was like, okay. All right. You do that. <clears throat> the place I feel most at home is that space between my bed and the wall. Huh. Yeah, I guess I can understand that. Ah, oh, we're birds of a feather. We should get together and talk about it sometime. No time is passing. I'm just, I can't do anything. Is this a superintendent? I'm so, superintendent. I'm so glad. I thought I was alone. This is different. I can go there. Gotta be a reason why. He hung up. Lynn ran away. The detectives yelled at me. The old pigeon man ignored me. And then the kettle nearly scared me to death. My life is in complete shambles. That's gratitude for you. We were just trying to warn him with the kettle whistle. Would he have preferred getting scalded by the steam? Well, at least his fate was changed a bit. That's good anyway. I don't know how that counts as changing anything, but... Oh! Okay, I can't do anything with that motor, but that is going to be useful somehow. Oh, I'm just gonna have to sit here. There it goes, the murder machine has started. And if the whole thing plays out, that gun on the wall will go off. But before that happens, it's up to me to use my ghost tricks. There must be some way to disrupt this domino effect. You just have to find it. Here goes. Ah, 
Nope. I'm really not sure <clears throat> what else I can do here. Okay. Oh, that is... Oh, a fate change for a checkpoint. Okay, thank you. That cheeky little Cupid who fires the arrow. But wait a minute. That swinging shovel. I wonder if that can be used as a weapon somehow against our Mr. Cupid. Guess I'd better rewind the clock. This one might take a little while. These are decidedly way more complicated. Okay. I'm not sure how. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The key to this murder machine is the cheeky little Cupid. Yes, yes, I know. We're going to try again. <coughs> I suspect this one's going to take me several tries. this toy the wheel spins and moves down the pole hey look there's a thread attached to it. it loops around the clock and is tied to the frame the gun is in and it seems to be connected to our fiery mr. Cupid as well this toy seems to be the heart of the entire mechanism but inertia is surprisingly powerful I can't stop it once it's set into motion I see okay okay so you want there's something about the ball going there or something we're gonna try again Okay, hold on. I think I see what I'm supposed to do, actually. I think I, it's actually the little ball that I want to launch. Somehow. There's there's a few um, non-sequitur, not non-sequitur, like red herring things here. Okay, I don't know if I'll be able to get this, but I think I know what I want to do here. got the timing wrong. You see that? Okay. I don't know if this is going to do it, <clears throat> but can you see what I'm trying to do? didn't work that wasn't it okay 
I have no idea that clearly that's not the right answer. So let's see if we can try something else. Wrong button. You can tell I'm confused when I start hitting the left or the right button when I'm trying to hit the left button. But that's gotta be the right answer. like a weird almost birthday birthday celebration okay well I did I did that okay yeah no the little like <laughs> surprise <laughs> oh my god it's a good question what just happened <laughs> looks like your future just got a whole lot rosier your death has been erased again that was satisfying I, uh, thank you. You kept your promise, didn't you, Sissel? My promise? You said I'd see you again if I died. I don't remember making any promises. It's all for my own benefit, anyway. He's pretending he doesn't care, but he totally cares. That's fine. Fate averted. What could this room be all about? Oh, I can't imagine. Those things that went off at the end, those were party poppers, weren't they? Party poppers. I have no recollection of what they are, but that's no surprise. The party poppers, the gun going off, it seems familiar somehow. What? I'll leave that part of the puzzle to you. I have my own puzzle to figure out. Well, shall we go back now? Back to your new present? Wild. Yeah, it's a, a, like, fake birthday cake. Sissel, are you there? Lynn is talking to me? If you're there, could you say something? If you're not there, I guess I'm just a weird girl who talks to herself. Well, you are kind of a weird girl, whether you talk to yourself or not. Okay, I gotta communicate with her. talk to her you are here I knew it I just had that feeling shame on you for not for stepping foot into a girl's head uninvited you literally invited me wait a minute don't give me that a ghost doesn't have feet fit <laughs> it's just a figure of speech hey did I say anything there that tone it's that tone of yours that makes me mad so did you have something in particular you wanted to say to me I just thought I'd share some information with you. I'm investigating a case right now. A murder case. And I'm doing it alone. Oh, oh, she's doing it without the department's approval. A murder case all by yourself? Yes, well, that's because the case was closed a long time ago. The culprit is already behind bars, forgotten by the world. <clears throat> so why are you looking into it then? Is it a fake? Is the culprit not actually responsible? Is it like your dad? your dad was framed for murder and now you have to prove his innocence because I think the person's innocent that's why there's something strange behind the case some big mystery I firmly believe that so anyway I finally have my memory back I'm not at liberty to tell you about the case he's he's dead honey he's dead like you can tell him it's fine what's he gonna do tell the dog <laughs> but if there's anything else you want to know, I'll try to answer what I can. <clears throat> Lynn is my only lead. I would like to ask her about a few things. <clears throat> but the one who shot me. 
You have your life and your memory back now. So, hey, Miss Lee, you'll never believe what happens. Yes, I'm gonna just go. I can't go there though. Like, the little girl dropped the telephone in the fish tank, and now I can't go bug the dog. But the dog will get out eventually. I believe in him. So, let me ask you again Who shot me tonight? Yeah, I thought that might be the first thing on your mind. What else would it be? There's a good chance I was shot while I was with you, after all. I'm afraid. My memory just isn't clear on that part. Not clear. I met with you tonight, and then you fell down right in front of me. I think I remember seeing that part. I'm pretty sure you were shot. Maybe from somewhere far away? So you didn't see the culprit. I'm sorry. I wish I could be more help. But I know I wasn't the one who shot you. Your colleagues seem to think you're a suspect, though. I wanted the information you had for me. So why would I shoot you before I got it? Information, huh? I wonder what info I had for her. About the girl with the bow. <clears throat> oh, Camila. By the way, I see you have a little roommate. Camila, how do you know about her? There was a tiny incident at your apartment a little while ago. An incident? What kind of incident? What happened? Is Camila all right? She's fine, thanks to her loyal little friend, Missile. Although I did have a little trouble bringing him back to life. Oh my, what in the world is going on? Why would anybody want to hurt Camila and Missile? You're being targeted by a certain organization. <clears throat> what? I saw them, the people who were calling you their target. So I'm a suspect and a target? Could this night possibly get any worse? Don't say that. Don't say that, Lynn. That is not a good idea to say. Especially not in a genre savvy game like this. <clears throat> the blue man group, yes, clearly. Definitely. It does sound pretty rough. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Huh? You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. Isn't it time you admitted you need me, need my powers? I'm sorry, I can't cooperate with you. Yes, you saved my life tonight three times. I'm completely grateful for that. But as a detective, I still can't trust you. That's too bad. I also might be working with the bad guys, so I don't blame you. <laughs> <clears throat> But the information. So I had some important information that you wanted, huh? That's right. You called the station yesterday and you asked to talk to me. You told me you had an important lead on the case I was working on. Important lead, eh? You said you wanted to meet me and talk to me directly tonight at the junkyard. And you fell for it, even given how fishy it sounds? You're the last person I want to hear that from, you know? But I just couldn't let it go, no matter how shady it seemed. It does seem really shady. I think we might be a baddie. I think Sissel might be a bad guy who's going to redeem himself. He's not blue, though. As far as I can tell. That's because I'm running out of time. Hey, that's right. You said something was going down tonight. Does that something have to do with the case you're working on? Dot, dot, dot. I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. Oh boy, but I guess I understand. <coughs> Are there any other things I can ask about? Okay, so he just repeats. They just repeat, repeat these questions, okay. Okay, I've asked her my questions. Dot, dot, dot. So what are you going to do now? Run, I guess. They'll catch me again if I don't get out of here. And I have to get to the restaurant. I'm worried about Camila. Oh yeah, what was it? The chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? What about you, Sissel? What are you going to do? I don't know to tell you the truth. You're my only lead. If you leave... I just realized... You and I are in the same boat. 
We're both looking for answers tonight, and neither one of us has anybody to help us. That about sums it up. Hey, even if you can't cooperate with me, how about if we just agree to use each other? <laughs> I suppose if it's mutual, it's not as bad as it sounds, but using somebody sounds bad. That's not a bad idea. You're on. But can I ask you to do a favor for me first? What's that? I need you to sneak into a certain place for me. A prison, to be exact. Prison. That's the place I was calling from the office upstairs. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Work schedule for a prisoner? Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. If this were Disco Elysium, we would have a tangent for 20 minutes where we talk about the prison industrial complex and the school to prison pipeline and for-profit prisons and how prisoners are being used as legal slave labor because of a loophole intentionally placed in the amendment to the constitution that otherwise forbids slavery. <clears throat> but this is not Disco Elysium. So I will say all of those things and, uh, and leave that on the table for you right there. So if you don't if you don't know about those things, I encourage you to educate yourself. There's been some really excellent journalism on the subject if you are entering into it with skepticism. So, I encourage you to do some digging from reputable sources. It's out there. It's horrifying. Be prepared. Read something nice afterwards, but um, yeah. And then become a prison abolitionist. <clears throat> anyway, video games. Each prisoner's schedule for the next day is written on a small blackboard in his cell. So just go check out a certain prisoner's blackboard, huh? Okay. His prisoner number is D99. If you do that for me, I'll cooperate with you. Okay, you're on. Here, let me give you the chicken kitchen's telephone number. That is a tongue twister. Chicken kitchen. Oh, that's not suspicious. Okay, see you later. See you. But don't die again if you can help it. I don't know that she's going to stay alive. <laughs> Ray, is, Ray is excited. Looks like I hold the key to the case Lynn is investigating. And she holds the key to solving the mystery of me. So we've started up a strange relationship of cooperation. Lynn gave me an assignment. My task is to go check out tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99. I'd better get to the prison. Caramelized leeks and put them in a quiche, it's delicious. Leek quiche is delicious. <clears throat> oh, she's so adorable. So it is actually just about 10 o'clock, but it's not quite 10 o'clock. So we can either keep going for about 10 minutes or we can stop here. I feel like stopping here is probably the smart and responsible thing to do. <clears throat> so... I like to do my stupid mini golfing, which for anyone who is watching me for the first time or hasn't heard me use the phrase mini golfing before, um, or just needs the refresher, that basically is when I am making wild guesses based on things that I've seen in the game. It is not, not necessarily on the most solid foundation, <laughs> but sometimes it comes true anyway. I can easily spend six minutes mini golfing. Okay, so mini golfing this game. What do I think is going on? Okay, I think Sissel's a bad guy. Or at least a Shades of Grey character who is working with the bad guys. And it may be that actually what he was doing was bringing her to 
the junkyard because she's the target of the blue guys and the blue guys want to find her and the blue guys were going to make a deal with Sissel. So it is possible that Sissel was going to trade whatever it was that he wanted for Lynn. So she's there getting shot because he's there. Um, him getting shot in addition to that may have just been the blue folks. Um, it could have just been the blue folks like covering themselves or it could be actually something to do with Ray because Ray is like, if we kill him, then he can go through and, and undo this whole mess. And so he gets killed there and then so that he can undo the mess that is caused by him selling Lynn out for whatever it is that he wants. Um, now, what is it that the blue people want? What are the blue people doing? What is the strange thing that's happening tonight? <clears throat> They're blue. And the weirdo pigeon man has been researching meteorite pieces and there's a, there's a, the, I feel like, I feel like the Tingle guy, um, is proof of supernatural outside of just ghosts. So we can, we can extrapolate from there that there is some sort of greater supernatural power that perhaps wants to prevent whatever bad thing is going to happen here and sets things into action. So Ray may be non-human, like greater than human, not like a dead person, but like greater than human part of like, like a guardian angel or something like that. I can't think of anything that the word Ray um, would be connected to, um, but I'm sure once I get whatever Ray actually is, it will be very funny that he's named Ray. <laughs> but um, there, that way, like we don't have to worry about the coincidences of things because there is a super, a greater supernatural force that's meddling in things to prevent the big bad from happening. I think that the blue people are aliens who've come to earth and are maybe trying to take over because <clears throat> this seems like the kind of game that would allow itself to just have a, have an evil trope we need to take over the planet or maybe we need to convert the planet into something for our alien blue people and tonight's the night i don't know why they need lynn i suspect that the prisoner I guess she's going to maybe try to break prisoner D99 out. I think that might be her dad. I think that maybe her dad was imprisoned years ago, long enough ago for it to be a cold case um, <clears throat> for a murder he didn't commit that he was framed for. And so crazy goof man, detective goof man, I think is her uncle or else perhaps her dad's former partner. And so he's like, I will watch out for her uh, because I feel bad for her dad and it's the least I can do. <clears throat> and so she needs to get to the bottom of this case. I don't know why she has this time limit unless they have like, well, she wouldn't be doing it with the death penalty being an issue because he wouldn't have a job to do at the prison tomorrow if it was a death penalty thing. So I'm not sure where her time constraint comes in, but she has one. Um, there's a bunch of pieces that I don't have to put this together. Um, as for why I'm convinced the blue folks are aliens, vibes. <laughs> they have this weird level of technology. They don't look quite like people in the rest of the world and the rest of the world doesn't have technology like theirs. Um, <clears throat> there seems to be something weird going on with them. Um, they seem military and we have human political military type stuff happening, but we've got like knights, like shiny armor in the prime minister looking dude's office. So I don't know. <clears throat> Plus like it would be really weird and this game is really weird. And this game, I think, is... I mean, Ace Attorney has supernatural elements, too. It has ghosts and stuff. So these these game developers are known to put weird things. I don't know that there have ever been aliens in Ace Attorney. But it could happen. So they tell you in writing school, they tell you that you shouldn't mix two kinds, two kinds of magic. 
um, <clears throat> which can mean magic and science fiction. Um, or, or two, like, like, like if you have a big thing on ghosts and then you have aliens, like in writing school, they'll tell you don't do that. Um, and if you're writing a serious story and you decide to have both ghosts and aliens, you're going to have to work really hard to make sure the two of them feel compatible and like they're part of the same story. If you're writing a comedy, you can get away with more weird stuff because it, there's comedies are much more forgiving about abnormal things happening in them. Um, well, alien ghosts, but even so, even with that, like, um, but they, they have to handle it just right. Um, there was a book that I read recently that had demons and aliens. And I'm like, you cannot have a, a, a demon selling her soul and also aliens escaping alien things on mundane earth. You can't do it. It did not work. Um, it felt like two different books had been smashed together. And that's the risk you take. This game, because it's this, like, wackadoodle comedy, if they want to have magic and ghosts and science fiction and aliens and just slap it together, they can get away with it. It's fine. It's fine. Because have you seen the character designs? Part of why they're able to get away with that is because the mundane stuff is also kooky as hell. I mean, we have Detective Weird, weird Face, Pants Man, Detective Dancer, like... His existence makes it so that we can have aliens and ghosts, and that's fine. It's fine. But I, I suspect that we're I suspect that we have some sort of existential, like end of the world threat happening. Um anyway, that's what I got. <clears throat> I if all of this is completely nonsense and you guys are like Lauren, what? Like, that's fine. If I've somehow hit the nail on the head, like, we will discover later on. That will be called a hole in one. <laughs> um, and it can be, I'm sure there's more golf terms for things that are not quite as clear. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we will. I didn't have anything quite like this to speculate at the end of last stream because I didn't have enough pieces. I now have more pieces and I can start putting them together. Um, but there's still a lot I'm missing. And so probably by the end of next stream, I'll either decide that my alien invasion theory is justified um, or I will scrap it and build something else. <laughs> but I will warn you, if I get really excited about a theory and I don't feel like it has been sufficiently disproven, I will continue to stack cards on that stack of cards, whether there's any foundation under it at all. And then it can all come toppling down at the end. And I'll be like, well, I thought that was a good idea anyway. <laughs> I'm really curious to see with this go Elysium, whether my mini golfing is um, at all correct. I have some theories. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I can usually get like the gist of it. A lot of times, a lot of times, folks can at least see where I'm coming from. <laughs> and I try to always show my work um, so that you can see if I get partial credit. <laughs> um, also, just because that's part of the fun. Um, but yeah, that's that's about where I'm sitting with this game right now. I feel like there has been, there was at least one where I was convinced that there was this thing and then there wasn't that thing. I'm pretty sure that I was severely overthinking uh, The Thousand Year Door. Um, like severely overthinking what they were doing with that story. Um, so I had all this complicated stuff going on that, that none of it happened because it's very what you see is what you get in that game. But I was expecting or hoping for a little more, I guess. Not every game needs to be a puzzle, but I do enjoy trying to solve puzzles. The Rube Goldberg puzzles, I was afraid when we did the one, um, <clears throat> the one we had to save her from being shot. The the one with the assassin um, and the light fixtures, I was afraid that that was an indication that um, this was going to become a frustrating game for me. And I was like, oh no, oh no. But it turns out it's not actually. Um, I think I can still wrap my head around even their more complicated or more frustrating 
puzzle designs. We'll see. But between that and the um, closed room, I feel like I've gotten a better sense of like the ways in which they'll complicate things. Um, and I think I can think of the solutions like the fact that the fact that I think of the solutions faster and then it's just a matter of figuring out how to execute them um indicates to me that I'm probably going to be able to mostly keep up um which is good I like that I like being able to uh not get stuck and have to ask for help in games um and yes Chrono if there is not a puzzle if there's no complexity to the story and characters I will still try to tease out some complexity when I was playing uh, Charles Barkley shut up and jam Gaiden I was trying to make sense of the story and predict what was going to happen next and read stuff into the characterization and people are like Lauren that it's not there it's not there. this game is not for that and I was like I know but I can't help myself the number of times I've been watching like paper thin really can't be really bad movies or tv shows and I'm like still I can't turn it off my brain is still trying to do it and I'm just like I'm sorry the people I'm watching it with are like, stop, Lauren, just stop. This is not, this is not productive. And I'm like, I wish I could just not, but I can't. It's a problem. I have a problem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and also the fail states are kind. This is not a game that's designed to be puzzle or to be, to be punishing. This is a game that's designed to give you a, the, the satisfaction of solving an occasionally difficult puzzle. And I like that. It's a good difficulty level for me. And it doesn't seem too dependent on things being, like, perfectly timed. Anyway, I did manage to talk for over 10 minutes. I will timestamp this. So the folks who are here for the mini golfing will be able to see that. And yes, I am making good progress. It's great. It's great. I guess maybe we'll do Undertale Yellow after this, I guess, which won't be super far in the future. Yeah, I can't digress that much. Um, I mean, I probably could digress more than I do, but I think I'm just digressing so much in Disco Elysium that there's something really nice about being able to just, like, play a game. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Yes, the p the pacing. It does. That's the thing is it has really good pacing, but it still has some chances for me to catch my breath and talk about things. And I can usually comment between lines of dialogue which I really nice which I really like um some other games could learn lessons from the pacing of this game <laughs> no um I realized I have a bunch of other games that I could play it's Undertale Yellow I want to do Aoden Rising I want to do I have Tunic by the way I have Tunic would you be interested in Tunic I don't know let me know I need to set up Ashley from the discord server has put together um a document with my uh my like games to stream and I just need to access that and uh make it accessible to everybody um and then you can start weighing in on what you would like to see me play from it okay this time for real I think I've done my time um let me double check actually I think I have some friends who are doing a special uh I think I have some friends who are doing uh a special event tonight are they still going no, it looks like they are not going. Well, I might I might raid a friend or something like that. Um, but I will see you lovely folks on Thursday. Oh, yes, you can read my fanfic. If, if you like, if you enjoy hearing me piece together stories and you would like to see what happens when I piece together a story to make it a story that's written, please read my fanfic. Um, <laughs> I will be here next Tuesday playing this game. I will be here on Thursday playing Disco Elysium and I will try to do some more streams because I do want to try to do um, like a tarot stream or something that's a belated birthday, very, very belated birthday stream. Maybe I'll do it on the one month anniversary of my birthday because it's a special birthday and I feel like I should do something. So anyway, good night, everybody. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>